Hello and welcome to part 2 of this tutorial series. If you haven't seen part 1 I recommend you view that as we will be jumping right in where we left off. So if you look at the scope you'll see we have a, a saw wave going and uh, this saw wave is passed in, patched in here and patched out here into our mixer. This unit we'll have a look at today is called the Wave Boss from Abstract Data. So the Wave Boss is four channels of uh, various types of audio manipulation, wave manipulation, hence the name Wave Boss. The first channel we'll be looking at today is in fact a VCA. It doesn't say so on the panel on the panel it says inversion, attenuation and 2x gain. It says here internal CV, external CV, then it has a signal in, CV in and the signal out. So we've patched our saw wave to the signal in and our signal out into the mixer and uh, in fact this internal CV CV knob here is the bias knob. Now you can think of the bias as a fixed CV amount you can set to uh, to your VCA and affecting it with this fixed internal amount. So calling it an internal CV is fine. Um, However, this one offers us inversion. So if we wrote, turn the, the bias knob counterclockwise, we'll start to see our original wave. If we, however, turn it clockwise, it will inverse our wave. So if we carry on it will then multiply our signal by 2 giving us double the original volume this works in both directions so you can see as it says on the panel inversion attenuation and 2x gain is all possible. Now, setting the bias to completely zero on a bipolar VCA can be problematic. And you can hear a little bit of bleed. This isn't a design defect. It's just a sacrifice one has to make for this added control. Now, if we're not going to use this VCA as a end-of-the-line volume controller because of the bleed, what would, the, would we use it for, possibly? Well, we could use it for wave shaping. Here I have uh, patched in the sub out of my oscillator, and I'm just running that through this triad. And if we patch that into the CV in, and allow that to manipulate our signal we see that we are now getting a triangle actually this is just a square out it's not the sub out if we patch it into the sub out every other Every other saw shape gets inverted, giving us a sub triangle. So, again, this is why it's called the Wave Boss. When it comes to manipulating waveforms, this unit is absolutely boss. We can uh, go to the second sub octave. You can now see how 
two are inverted and two are not inverted. Back to the square. So, we could of course use, instead of a square wave, a sine wave. And uh, any other wave, and this will give us many, many crazy sounds. Another thing we can do is to use a simple envelope. And because we have the pi set to zero, it's going to work like a regular VCA. If we, however, offset the bias. It's gonna it's gonna dynamically alter our waveform. And this gives us some temporal changes. But imagine that the shape was an LFO working at very slow speeds. You would now have a dynamically evolving LFO. Which is nice. So this is among the powerful aspects that bipolar VCAs have. Now, because this is an attenuator and an inverter, we could call this an attenuverter, or a voltage-controlled attenuverter, or a VCA. So keep this in mind, just because something is called a VCA doesn't mean that it has all the capabilities or functions of every other VCA. Most modules are good for something, fantastic for a lot of things, but don't excel at everything. Me personally, I would always drive something like the UVCA, a unipolar VCA, at the end of my volume chain, and something like the Wave Boss before to modulate and manipulate the sound. So, if we remove this envelope and replace it, You should be able to see the original saw shape inside the new shape. And if we bring up the frequency of the modulator, you'll see that it only exists in the same polarity as the saw. You'll see the zero point where there's silence, the modulation doesn't pass through there. This is what we call, again, amplitude modulation. And most volume modulation happens in a multiplication of zero to one. So the volume can never go above here. The volume will never go above the carrier signal. The modulator will act within its dimensions. I hope this makes sense. So we call this two quadrant multiplication. The carrier can move from one to zero and down to minus one. The modulator m multiplies by any number between zero and one. So, once the carrier goes below zero into a negative number, the modulator multiplies the negative number by an amount between zero and one. Or actually, in the case of the wave boss, between zero and two. 
But um, what happens now if we take this towards zero bias, we start to get modulation that exists in all four quadrants. Maybe you can visualize it here on the scope. And it's good to do with a saw wave. Two quadrants. Four quadrants. So the sound we hear right now is known as a ring modulation. And if we play, a play around with the uh, pitch of our oscillator and our LFO, which is actually an oscillator as well, you start to hear this uh, very recognizable ring modulation sound. So, why won't we just say that the first channel of the wave boss is a ring modulator? Well, because the wave boss is a VCA, and ring modulators are in fact uh, four diodes connected in a ring, each modulating the output of the next, causing this effect known as ring modulation. It's a very specific circuit. Ring modulation is, in fact, four quadrant multiplication, and if we want to be super anal, we could say that bipolar VCAs and ring modulators are both capable of four quadrant multiplication. I hope I'm not confusing you too much with this uh, math talk, it had me a bit confused at first. So, many interesting timbres can be reached with uh, ring modulation. And I have the sound passed through a micro VCA from IntelliJo, the one we looked at in our last segment. And I'm going to use that to gate our sound. I'm going to add a bit of exponential set. So you can hear these very percussive timbres with some proper fine-tuning modulator and carrier we can get all sorts of weird percussive sounds. Now, the timbres we're hearing right now are not being created by a filter or any such. They are being created by a VCA, a bipolar VCA. And they are very hard to create using any other method. So I recommend, if you haven't already, that you dive into amplitude modulation and four quadrant multiplication or ring modulation as it's more commonly called. It is very rewarding. For percussion it's almost invaluable.
the nice thing with the Wayboss is because it's um, it's capable of both amplitude modulation and four quadrant multiplication or ring modulation. Simply changing the original waveform around a bit can have very dramatic effects on the outcoming timbre. So anyway, that's voltage controlled a 10 new version or bipolar VCA or four quadrant multiplier or well point is as long as you understand what it does and you're able to order one if you want one or ask about these features, if those are what you're interested in, you're good. You'll find this with a lot of stuff in modulars. They have many names. Some are very technical. Some are nicknames of sorts. Most important thing is that you understand what they mean. So I've just noticed that my spring reverb has been on the whole time. But um, these percussive sounds sound nice through a spring reverb, so that's fine. Anyway, I hope you found this informal you learn something. I hope you'll experiment with these things and uh, you'll tune in next time. Please uh, subscribe to the channel or at least throw a like on the video. Uh, I hope to speak to you again. Goodbye.